Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 34. <laughs> I should look before I start filming. Um, I think that's what we're on. And we have a regular podcast episode. I have a couple of really fun things to talk about. If you're new here, Welcome to the craziness uh, that is my knitting diary. If you are returning, thanks for coming back to hang out with me. I'm so excited you're here. Uh, we have, yeah, some good things to talk about and a lot of finished objects. It was a week. It was, I don't even know. I got some like crazy finishing mojo. Who knows? Um, so yeah let's just start i got some acquisitions okay so if you're new here let's go over the agenda really fast uh we are going to talk about what i'm wearing which is a finished object um i have other finished objects this week we'll talk about whips future making plans some books um acquisitions I told you though, I told you last week that I was going to get yarn this week coming, coming way faster from a pre-order than I expected. Uh, yeah, that's okay. And we'll finish up with some other things. I think I can go through, we'll see, we'll see how long it takes to get through some of this because I, I do have, um, accessories to go through for free pattern still. I really wasn't going to do that. I was only going to do some shawls, which is really all I'm going to cover. I got a couple though that were given in. And so I would like to cover those. I may just skip socks since I didn't get that many recommendations. And honestly, I think everybody's sock preferences are so specific. I, I might just skip that. So we'll wrap up with that. How about that? That sounds good. Okay. I have wearing, I'm wearing fluff. So you know, I'm going to have fluff in my eyelashes, on my lips this whole episode, especially because I'm going to change so I can show you something else. Oh my lord. Oh. Okay, so happy end of March. We are really close. It is Saturday, March 30th today. I will post this hopefully early uh, on Easter Sunday. I will switch my filming schedule next week. Sorry, we're just doing housekeeping and beginning this week, so hey. <laughs> um, grab yourself a nice cozy drink, cuddle up, have your knitting out or spinning or crocheting or whatever you're doing. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to move my filming schedule back to Thursdays. I was thinking about this while I was taking a shower today. <laughs> it's when you get your best thinking done, isn't it? Uh, no one was bothering me for my attention. And I was just thinking, you know, I really liked filming on Thursdays because I could post before the weekend. And as the weather gets nicer here, we're going to be out and about a lot more. And because we're going to be out and about a lot more, I do not want to have to dedicate a lot of uh, one day to filming, editing, posting, all that kind of stuff. I do do it all at once, which I don't have to, but I don't want to post midweek because I just like, this is a kind of thing I don't, if I start letting this linger, then I'll never get them posted. So I just, you know, get it all out at once. But I, uh, yeah, I will you know, edit this one later tonight, post, and then I think we'll just move to Thursdays, which I'll either do before work or after work on Thursdays, edit maybe Friday sometime, but just get it up on Friday. That'll be my, that'll be my goal. So you can look forward to that next week, uh, which means I'll have a short knitting week, which is okay. Uh, I don't need to get as much done. I've got so much done, so much done this week. I have just been like hammering through things. I, I don't know. I don't know why. Don't, don't ask me. It may slow down as we start getting busier and doing more things, but, um, I've just been like, not as distracted at night. Uh, sometimes I sit down and just like look at Ravelry for a long time or do other things that are not knitting. Uh, I don't have that many hours to knit though. So I am using that precious time to just, uh, get things done. So I am using my very cute, it says holiday homebody. It is a holiday tomorrow when you guys are watching this. So there we go. 
Um, also, so a friend got me this a couple years ago and I was like, she said for all your hot chocolate, which I was like, yes, this is what I need. I don't often drink hot chocolate anymore, but um, I do have a lavender latte in here today, um, which is so fun because I'm knitting something with my lavender latte yarn. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let us talk about our first finished object which is what I'm wearing. And yeah, it does look like an Easter egg. And yes, I am going to wear this tomorrow when we have Easter dinner. Uh, maybe. I honestly, I don't wear knits, you know, not working like around my house because I have a kid who likes to like grab a lot. And also she eats with her hands. So I can't like sit next to her at dinner <laughs> wearing a hand knit. It's like, you know, blocking her, blocking and parrying. Okay. So this is my instant crush pullover which was my first knit along this year for here on the channel a little bit on Instagram um we had a chat we had I don't know eight or nine people do it I know at least three of you are done so that's great um I think some people paused and a couple people need to rework and I think you know this is a this is a hard one to do a knit along for because there's oh, so many gotchas your gauge you know, just doing color work all over, just doing two strands of Surrey or mohair or whatever, like that, that's a little bit challenging and slower. So like, you know, this is what we picked. It is what it is. We shall move on and do another knit along starting in the beginning of May. Um, I talked about last week. And so we'll talk about that more in the coming weeks. So uh, here is here it is. I'm so excited. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It came out last fall. I know there were like a ton that came out, sort of the testers and then the first wave of people who got really excited. I haven't seen any new ones in a little bit. And so like, here, we're going to just keep uh, loving on this pattern because it's so fab. So let's talk about what it is first for anyone who's new and or just a refresher for you since I don't always talk about all the things. This is a top down raglan color work all over two strands of fluff I did choose Surrey which does create a very different fabric than two strands of mohair this is four colors that is what the pattern recommends though you could very easily somebody else was using, using scraps in the knit along and I think she picked five colors and she just reworked the charts a little bit like just you know instead of a b you know a b c d for the colors right she just threw in her last one and um, it actually looks really cool. Uh, she did a little bit like coloring in on, I don't know, a computer or something to make her own chart, which was really fun. Anyway, um, it is all charted, the pattern. I don't know that I've really talked about this. So this is not, if you are have never worked with a chart before, I don't know that I would say pick this as your first charted work. Uh, I thought it was pretty easy to, um, to follow and she definitely very specifically the pattern itself is relatively short I, we've talked about this a lot my preferences for patterns are that you get to the meat of it I don't I now don't need a ton of hand holding especially for something um that's relatively basic like in shaping and stuff it's relatively basic it does have short rows in the back before you get to the color work what else does it have? We've got these elongated cuffs. The sleeves really nicely don't have any decreases in them until you get to the end, which is actually much easier to do, though it's a little bit, you know, more knitting. Um, yeah, nothing else. Nothing else that was uh, particular about this pattern. But why I would why I say I would not, if, if you were like, I'd love to try a charted pattern, I would say pick something that doesn't have 30 charts in it. Uh, you do follow... I think each pattern follows four or five different charts. So like you have your yoke chart and then you've got uh, like a, a little kind of meet your underarm piece chart and then you've got your body and then you have your sleeves. Like that's a lot of things to kind of keep track of. And sometimes you're not using the whole chart. You're going until a certain row and like that can get confusing and there's, there's increases in it. It's a whole thing. I would say if you've done some charted work before and you like color work, this was a really accessible color work pattern because of the fluff. Yes, I did say the fluff is a little bit, it makes your knitting a little slower, but it's super forgiving in your tensioning. Um, as long as you're not strangling your yarn. I think, I think fluff, if you are a English knitter, maybe a little bit harder because the silk cord does not have as much ease in it. Um, 
that would, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like maybe that makes it a little bit tighter for me because I'm a relatively I'm a loose ish continental knitter. Um, doing the color work like this, just, it looks really even because the fluff, that's all I'm saying and blocking and all of that stuff. Okay. Um, you know what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell you the size details. And as I do that, I'm going to show you a picture pre-blocked right now and a picture post-blocked. Um, forgive the pre-block. It was just, you know, I don't know what I'm even wearing in it, but it was just like in the bathroom. Uh, but it does, uh, we can see post-block, it, it did grow the body, not a ton, a little bit. Um, my sleeves definitely grew. I did that on purpose. I did pull them because they were sitting pretty, like a little bit bracelet length, but like felt like if I started moving, they would feel real short. Um, so I wanted to give myself an extra like inch or so, which I accomplished. And they are like the perfect length right now. And I love them. So um, I will keep the picture up of it post blocked, which is a picture I have not taken yet. So I'm assuming I'll look very cute in it when I go take pictures when I'm done filming. Um, but this is okay. So this is a size six, which is 47.25 inches. Uh, the recommended ease is zero inches. So this was the closest to my bust. Um, my bust generally measures at 47 inches and uh, I used four millimeter needles for the body, three millimeter needles for the ribbing, which is what's recommended. And I think those uh, suit well. Gauge. Let's talk about gauge. I don't do this all the time, but I did go back and I looked to see what the gauge was supposed to be and then what I got. Um, gauge is supposed to be 19 stitches by... Um, sorry, 19 stitches by 25 rows. I'm a little bit closer to 18 stitches, you know, give or take, uh, by closer to 22 rows. So I definitely probably, although I don't think that like, that's okay. Let's talk about it. Cause I also really only did a gauge one place. I should have done it in the chest. Cause I think on the chest, I was probably really close to the 25, uh, row gauge row gauge is aspirational. Um, but in the body, I definitely think like a I was a little bit over it and I was just knitting a little bit looser. I can tell, I can tell not so much when I look at it, but like I could tell while I was doing it, I was like, Oh, so I think that maybe my row gauge expanded just a tiny bit down there. Um, it, I also did a row gauge in my sleeves and because I did pull lengthwise a little bit, that's also why I think it's a little bit shorter, but that's what it was supposed to be. I was relatively close. I did not gauge swatch for this. I just went for it. So that's, that's good. Um, and what else do I have to say about, okay. I am, um, I used a back loop yarn coat yarn for all of this. Uh, this is frost Nordic goldenrod. And then the speckly is called Tia Beanie. I, um, used her uh, Surrey, obviously we just talked about being Surrey, which is 74% baby Surrey alpaca, 26% silk, 328 yards for 50 grams. So it's like the regular, you know, like the more normal Surrey base. Um, it's definitely thicker than mohair. It's definitely like denser, uh, hair wise than mohair, which is what how he did her sample in. Um, I mean, I really honestly think like Surrey is the, is the hero of this sweater. I mean, not only because obviously that's what's made in, but like just every piece of it, like it's so soft. It feels amazing. It just feels like a warm hug. Um, and just like, I think the, for how forgiving it is and like tensioning across some of these long floats and everything. I think the Surrey helps fill in gaps more than mohair would. So I'm glad that I picked that. Okay. What I'm going to do is what I've been doing and I'm going to scoot my chair away. So you'll see me standing in just a second. Okay. For you guys and for photos, I am wearing jeans. I know. It's crazy. I never wear jeans. Uh, let's see. I feel like it looks, I feel like I look extra strange when you can't see my head. Let me see if I can adjust. Yeah. You, I mean, my room, this, my, my office is really just not that big. Um, that's good. 
So you can see uh, it fits really nicely. It is really close to my bust right now. Like I have a, you know, if I pull my arms out, I have a tiny bit of ease. It's definitely not negative ease, but it's really close to zero. Um, I did measure across and because my rope, my stitch gauge is like one stitch more, it's like closer to 48 inches, which is fine. Um, yeah. Oh man. It's so cozy. Cozy just in time for spring. Here's what the back looks like. You can see the, um, you can see the short rows at the top. Yes, it's so fun. I'm not a yellow girl. We, we've talked about this. I'm not a warm person, but I think with all these cool tones with it, it's like just enough that that pop is fun. Um, I think another color that would have been fun with this is like pink or an orange, but like I am very happy with the combo. Um, it's another fun thing to just like play with colors, especially because it's a little bit, it's already a fun pattern to pick fun colors is not crazy. Like I don't think it actually makes it more crazy. I think it just makes it like, it's just a really fun pattern. Um, yeah. Uh, arms are snug i mean they're not they definitely are not like tight on me but they're definitely more fitted uh through the top part because um the number of cast the, you know the number of stitches in them but i am yeah i'm really pleased with the fit again this is a raglan so like here's the raglan line it's not um i don't get a lot of bunching here so i think it's like fitted well in the upper bust i'm i'm loving it and that is the instant crush all done, which is really exciting. Okay, I'm gonna leave the camera at this top higher angle for maybe the rest of the episode. I actually don't mind it. Uh, but because I'm gonna try something else on to show you, because I finished so many things. Okay, but let me tell you how much yarn I use because I feel like I have not been doing that. And that's a big part of this for sure. So, um, I used a total of 2,418 yards, uh, which is 368 grams of the fingering or of this, uh, the semi lace weight, sorry, right? Which I did the, I mean, obviously I did the math for that, but like three is six. That's seven balls, seven balls. Um, yeah, so for each of the colors, I used almost three of the main color. Cuffs, hem, the top, right? That's why. Um, you use it throughout, obviously, but not like more than anything else. Um, but the other, but that takes a lot of yarn. I mean, it's these are like three, four inch, four inch cuffs, four inch hem. Like it's, it's quite a lot, actually. Um, the other colors were all pretty close and they were all like just about one and a half balls of of each of the colors so that is yeah four and a half plus three so seven and a half ish um that is why that's a lot of yarn and because you hold it double like I didn't knit I mean I did I knit 2,000 whatever yards uh, but it was like knitting 1200. So like a pretty normal DK weight sweater quantity. You can make this DK and I think it would work fine, especially if you like are not a furry, lacy, um, sorry, if you are not a fluffy person, then I think you could totally do this and it would be just as fun in a thing. I do think the fluff is like extra fun, but personal preference. Okay. That was a lot of time for this sweater. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to talk about this one first because this is, we're going in cast on order here. Uh, this is the sweater that you can see from outer space. Just kidding. Um, but this is my absolutely gorgeous gift knit for my sister-in-law, Caressa. And it is my finished, her finished clay sweater. Holy bonanza. It's so bright. It's so beautiful though. Do you love it? I had two sleeves done last week and maybe started in on the body. She is shorter than me. This actually fits really well on me. So this might be a little bit longer than she anticipated on her, but like, what are you going to do? 
it's hand knit. I can rip it out if she really doesn't want it, but I am going to, uh, let's, let's talk about the details and then I'll try it on for you because this is the size I would make for myself and we can talk about it. So this is the clay sweater by Haley Smedley, who is Ozetta on Instagram and YouTube. Um, it's a drop shoulder. We'll talk, I'll put it on and you can really see, but there's a drop shoulder in that it has like a very fun shoulder detail that like sits in the back and then you pick up and, and knit down your front, um, sides it does have this intermittent garter texture. It's This is a size large and it's 51.5 inches. The recommended ease, it's supposed to be oversized as many of Ozetta's patterns are, 10 to 12 inches which or 10 to 11 inches, which is a, a lot of oversize. Um, I used five millimeter needles for the body, 4.5 for the collar and the cuffs and hem. That's not recommended. She recommends to just use the five for everything but the collar. Uh, I don't really like that look. I like it to be a little bit more sucked in, but I, and I also think because this is not very structured yarn, it is super wash yarn. It needed that like to be a little bit smaller. So it's not just like super loosey goosey. Um, I used back loop yarn co for this also yarn, uh, in basic DK in the color flamingo, which is the brightest neon pink ever. Um, it's a hundred percent super wash merino, 231 yards for 100 grams. So I'm gonna change into it really fast and I'll stand up and we can talk through sort of the fit and other things about it. But overall, this pattern was pretty easy. There are a lot of pages to it. <laughs> this is one of those. Because there's a lot of sizes and there are a lot of sizes that don't share instructions. So like you have to do, partly because like of where your like yoke goes, you know, every size will sort of end in a different place. And so everyone has to catch up to do different things, to add a little bit more, to do something else before you join sleeves. So, so it was just like a lot of instructions. What I do on my iPad is like, I'll, I'll put something in books and then I go through and I X out everything. So I don't get distracted to have to find where I am. And I highlight each of the sections that are pertinent for the size I'm making. I'll clear it all out before I make it again. If I do that, don't usually do it at the end of a pattern, but like it's, it, yeah, it was, I don't know. It was one of those ones where I felt like I was like flipping through pages a ton, uh, but I really enjoy the end result for this and I hope she really loves it. Uh, we'll see. I'm not going to give it to her yet. I don't know when I'll see her, you know, in the near future, very near future, uh, but I might just wait till Lawrence is done and give it to them both at the same time. We'll see. Okay, here it is. Oh, it's actually so fun. The fit is really fun. Um, the cuffs, the sleeves are a little bit long, uh, but I think that's okay. Uh, it, she wanted like a sweatshirt feel. So I feel like this is very sweatshirty. You can see this sort of piping edge, which I did say, I was like, I don't know what's going on with this when I first was making it. It's just an eye cord that is like a faux seam. And I think the reason she does it is because you would see jogs when you're switching between the knit and pearl rounds um, to do this kind of stripe and doing this at the change instead really like it you can't see it you you see this line instead and so it happens also on both sides of the body to make it even because i'd be really weird if it was only on one <laughs> but yeah it's yeah that's that's what it is so the fit is great it's very it's very boxy crest is a little smaller than me so it'll fit even boxier on her there's definitely ease in here again my best is around 47 this I didn't block this with pins. I just laid it on my little meshy mat thing to block. Um, I think we're probably pretty close to the, the 51, 50 and a half, 51 inches. Um, yeah, easily. So I think she's really going to like the fit. Obviously the, the piece we really love about this is that shoulder detail. Oh, it's so cute. Can you see it? I can't see what you can see. Yeah, you can see it. Um, I'm like, I'm not actually very tall, but this is cameras at a weird angle. Um, so it just like, this is how you do your sort of short rows in the beginning, building them through to here. And then, uh, you know, you pick up along this edge. So it sits off the back. It's really similar to how I constructed the stick season. Yeah. And here it is. It's so fun. I'm really glad this isn't for me. This is actually, I kind of like it, but it's like maybe a little too bright. Like, I don't think I would pick this very often. This shade of pink here, this boysenberry shade, or even in my neon era are like slightly darker that I feel like I would, I would run for more, but this is actually kind of fun. Here I am. This is, I'm like doing a sorority girl pose. 
so I can talk to you. Uh, but I really, yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed making it. I actually think I really would like one of these for myself. I just don't know what color I would pick. Something with more structure though. I think I would, I would definitely do this in a non superwash yarn too. Just make sure over time that this doesn't get droopy because it's already a boxy fit. I feel like I would like that better, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would actually maybe probably really like this in a cotton merino blend too. Because you could wear it like just like a sweatshirty thing in the summer. Okay, I'm gonna change again. So let's talk about a couple of other things about that really fast. So the gauge on that is supposed to be 18 by 18 stitches by 34 rows. I'm very close to 18 stitches by 30 rows, which means this is why. So it, it does, I think it's, you know, probably droops a little bit more in the armpit than is intended, although it already is like an oversized fit like that. But I did not complete all of the body. I put this note in my Ravelry too. I did like two and a half repeats instead of three and a half repeats. Um, cause A, she wanted it to be a little bit shorter. I wanted to do the full ribbing, but yeah, it was just going to be too long. So, um, and she's short. So I just deducted, right? And no big deal, but I'm really close to like the actual pattern measurements taking that out, which is quite a lot. I used 615 grams of yarn of DK weight yarn, uh, -huh, uh which was 1421 yards, which is, I think less than recommended, like, or less than anticipated. It says, uh, four size four. Yeah. I mean, it's 40 yards. I'm, I was really off, only off by 40 yards. Um, but that is also, I think it was like six, it would have been like six and a half skeins. So I got seven, not even thinking about the fact that most skeins are over. I have a whole skein left in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do something fun with that. Uh, who knows? It's really bright. I feel like I should make her like a Manhattan hat and uh and and give her so she can be the brightest human um known to man. But uh okay, let's talk about my next finished object. I like I almost I do have whips because I cast more things on, but holy heck, uh we're still talking about finished objects. So this was my stretch goal this week, but I did it. I finished my test it for uh, Tori you. So this is the Skyline tee. It's so cute, right? I will wear this in next week's episode, but I do want to show it to you on because it's fresh in my memory of all the things and we can talk about it really fast. Um, I, I'll talk about it next week too, but release will be like shortly after that. So um, just to hype you up for this a little bit. Uh, this is a saddle shoulder construction top down t-shirt. It's a fingering weight yarn it has this three by one um saddle shoulder let me hold that up to you before i put it on so you can see it it looks really beautiful i did block it out a little bit i'll tell you about my blocking journey from this one in a second i really love it i it is a boxier fit and let me just see a couple of these things here so the suggested ease is four to six inches i made a size five which is 50 inches that's not quite that for me but you know how that goes we we always talk about this being 47 inches is a, a weird place to be i used 3.25 millimeter needles for the body three millimeter needles for the ribbing um and this is made with grenwico 8515 sock in the color three sisters you can get this if you want to match me um it's 85 percent superwash merino 15 percent nylon 437 yards for 100 grams. So similar to what she used. So Tori did her sample in um, earthy sock from Explore Knits and Fibers in the color Pike Place, which I, I've shown before. I'm actually going to, hopefully the picture that went up for the pattern is me wearing this because that's what I like to do when I finish something. So like, yes, it's, that's like very, it's almost exactly the same yarn other than this has you know, nylon in it and a super wash. And that is just earthy. But this is why I say road row gauge is aspirational. This gauge is supposed to be 26, no, 25 stitches by 33 rows. I thought that I needed to go down a needle size, which would have been crazy. I ended up like, I didn't, um, I didn't pull to block this one a lot. So we can talk about the measurements, but I'm like 
a hair under 50, like barely 49 and a, a, you know, three quarter inches or whatever, super close to 50. Um, my row, my gauge is 26 stitches by almost 40. It's like 39 and a little, uh, that's really different row gauge wise. I didn't actually use tons more yarn than she anticipated. So she put four size five that the yarn, uh, the yardage is 1189. That was what she anticipated that you would use. I used 1344. Um, I used three full skeins. I did add length. So if we take that into account, like I probably used an extra like 25 grams just for length. So I'm, pr I'm pretty close to yardage, but I did definitely like this is I probably a little bit denser than hers because my my row gauge is off. I'll put that in the notes. Obviously, like I, I still like row gauge is aspirational, but also she does all her me measurements in inches, like, you know, knit until four inches and then join the body, whatever the things are that like it was fine. It didn't end up being a big deal. Uh, let's talk about the fit in a second. Let me, let me put it on and I shall scoot, scoot, scoot and show you. Movie magic. Here I am again. Oh my gosh. I love it. I actually have not put it on since blocking, which we'll talk about the blocking as soon as I sit back down. Um, but it's so cute. I don't know exactly how I want the neck to sit. Okay. So I did actually, I talked to Serena about this, uh, right before I did my sleeves. Cause I asked her like, how is the fit for her sleeve since there is no short row shaping. So I also will discuss that in a moment. Um, and she put it on and she said, yeah, it's maybe a little, there's like kind of a little extra fabric right there just, uh, because of the boxy fit. Um, and she showed the same thing for hers. I actually think it, it sits pretty nice still. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like a boxy summer top. I think it would be really cute with, this would be really cute with like dark blue jeans for me. Um, I'm going to wear it all the time. I totally knew this was going to be like a hard wearer because it's, it's like a really nice way to show off some hand knit or hand dyed skeins without, you know, like, I don't think I lost all of, you know, this detail because this is like a little bit speckly. I think if you have a really hard variegated, like you might lose some of this detail, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, but the sleeves like look itty bitty, but we can talk about them in a sec. Okay, let's look at the back. I don't, I like don't know what to do with my arms when I'm turning the back. Uh, looks pretty cute. Yeah, it looks pretty cute. Um, yes. What do you think? I like it. Um, I did helical knit this. You can see my button. <laughs> my pants button. Um, yeah, but I did helical knit this. So I think like the color looks really even. Everything but the sleeves actually I did not helical knit, which I usually recommend doing, but we can talk about those. Uh, yeah, let me sit back down and we will discuss the rest. It's really pretty much a, um, spring day here in the Pacific Northwest. Like, I mean, it's very sunny and beautiful outside and Mike and I were just cleaning the patio furniture and doing all this kind of fun stuff. Baby's up now, but I was, we were like doing chores while she was down and now Mike has her so I could film. But, um, yeah. Okay. That was the last thing to try on. So let me just also change our angle a little bit. <sighs> that was a lot of try on. That was a lot of finished objects. I'm not even done. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Back to this though. Let's talk through a couple of things. So what I did to block is I felt like it was crazy. So I actually just laid this. Usually test nets, I'll block two measurements. Um, and we'll like pin them for the whole time that they were blocking. I just felt like because I was really close for like row gauge and because my measurements are, you know, th I didn't need to stretch it at all. Like the length is what I wanted. Um, I laid this to kind of par block on, uh, the mesh thing. I let it dry overnight last night and it was dry this morning, but because I kind of just laid it like this, <laughs> um, these saddles were not very open. So what I decided to do is I went, this morning and I steamed these and pinned this and it's like awkward because I just had to do it you know in it, it's not true shape but so that these whole things were open like this I think that was actually a really good decision because it opened them just enough 
it's not they're not blocked heavily but it opened them enough so that you could see it uh which is what we want. If we're gonna do all this work, we want to be able to see them. Um, they do sit a little bit front. Uh, for me, not quite as much as Ariel's. Ariel's, like the whole shoulder thing, seemed to be sitting on her front. I, do, I mean, maybe. We'll see next week when I wear it again, um, you know, what I think about it. But I like the fit. I do, okay, so the arms. There are no short row shaping. There, they, there are. There is no short row shaping. The reason I think is because they're little. The drop of this is maybe a little bit more dramatic than the pullover. The pullover, I did go back and look, has optional short row shaping. I think I used the short row shaping. This one does not have it because you're just knitting this sort of like itty bitty baby thing. I actually knit to pattern, which I don't always do <laughs> for sleeves. I'll just make them a little bit longer. But I, I, I like tried on after the first one was mostly done and like right, right before the one inch of, uh, you know, cuff or whatever and of uh, ribbing. And I thought that I was actually probably a pretty good t-shirt size. I like it now that it's on, now that it's blocked, now that it, it you know, is done. I think that it's a good length sleeve. So that's what I think about it. That test is due on April 11th. I think the deadline, like the, the published date that she wants is the 13th. There are a lot of people that are done already, I'm pretty sure. So I'm sure she's got like notes coming in. I don't have a lot for her that were like things I didn't understand. I'll give her fit notes and the yarn used and all this other stuff. I will tell her that my row gauge, my row gauge was not accurate, but what are you going to do? I, I feel like it's like the two spectrums of knitters like Tori has less rows per stitch gauge and Ozetta always has more like I can never get to Ozetta's row row gauge like it's it's impossible for me if I'm gonna get the stitch gauge I can't I don't know she must be an English knitter it's my only this is my only thought for that I cannot imagine I don't know how or she's tensions like a ton in her continental hand who knows Okay, let's get, finally, um, through our last finished object, which is yarn. I didn't think I would get this done. Um, I did uh, my merino spin. I forgot to bring down the um, single for you last week. So you're just going to see the finished yarn. It is a little bit over spun, over plied, over plied maybe, um, which is fine. When I was... Uh, winding it off onto the nitty knotty I did feel a little bit of it was like a tiny bit ropey um I think it's maybe not quite as soft as this is my last merino spin which is beautiful um and then there's this one but what are you gonna do it looks relatively similar um it's again just a two ply uh because I will put a picture here of what the braid looked like but when I was you know before I spun it um and it just has streaks of brown in it. So I decided to just like, I folded it in half and broke it. And I just, um, I didn't split or anything. I just, I just uh, spun from, from one end. Um, and then the other, and then I did a traditional two ply. Let me show you what it looks like skeined. Cause I feel like that tension on it sometimes makes, it gives you a better picture of what the yarn actually is like doing. Here's a cute little skein for you. Um, Let's see. Yeah, do you see, like, it just looks a little bit ropier. Like, it's definitely plied a lot more than the one I dropped on the floor, this one. Maybe not a lot more, actually, they kind of look similar. This one definitely does not feel as soft as this one, though. Like, the this one bloomed more. It might have been that these singles were spun a little bit more also than this. And so even though this is plied maybe similarly, like, there's more bloom. Like, it even looks fuller otherwise the same I think this was yarn uh, or fiber that I got when I bought my um ladybug from somebody it was used she had a couple things of fiber and she said hey do you want these and I said sure <laughs> um here though and this actually is a lot grayer than I thought it was this this turned out like a lot browner which is fine um here is what I had left over from both of them um, I, you know, as even as you're going to be, it's not always going to be exactly even. I, um, just did a two ply from the two separate. It was almost exactly even the two, what was left over. That was 
that was odd here is a teeny tiny baby skein it's so cute um i did also think that this looks a lot grayer this also feels a lot softer it's the middle baby of these two it looks like a middle baby of these two They're very pretty. I think I may use this for a traveler shawl. If I do, I'll definitely use this one closer to my neck. Um, for the Dre Renee Knits uh, spin to knit a long thing, um, I think she calls it the spin it to knit it, uh, which is, it, it's a whole year. It's until like next February, all the traveler patterns. And the shawl is probably the only one I would tackle with my own yarn, but um, I think that the, also the second skein is closer to a fingering, whereas the first one is a little closer to a sport. It's okay. It's all good. Um, if I don't like the ply of it, I can always unspin it a little bit. It's like I've seen YouTube videos on it. I have not done it yet. Uh, but essentially, you just run it back through your wheel at a slightly, like, you do the opposite way. Like, I think it's quickly so that it, like, takes out just a little bit of the of the ply. I don't know if that's necessary. I'll probably just knit with it. Moving right along. Let's talk about our whips. Um, I forgot to bring down the flower blanket again. I don't really, I still am only making individual flowers. I think I will plan to crochet together. And by making individual flowers, what I sort of decided is I do need to mostly crochet them as they go. So I have made three or four full flowers and then I have made four or five, uh, till the outside so the actual the outside is a lot of uh crocheting but uh because you have to do like a dip stitch thing but anyway i will just like to join to go and like join a couple of them at once that is likely what i will do this week i think this week i'll get a bunch of that done because i need to cast on one other baby blanket and i would really like to get most of this one done before i do that and i have like new fun things happening so this next thing i'm going to talk about is uh, the only sweater, the only knit whip that is in existence from last week because I finished everything else. And that is the Haley sweater. So this is a test knit for Iris H, who is Hyris Makes on Instagram and YouTube. And um, it's a very long, super generous test deadline. So I am going to unprioritize this for a couple of weeks in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to push through to joining, I think this week, that's my, my, my goal. Last week I had just this, I got new lipstick. This is not the same red, but this still looks really nice with this. This is new lippy and I really like it actually. Um, okay. This is where I was last week. Just this little itty bitty hello lavender baby, baby flower. Yes. It's very cute. Where is it? Oh, it's so cute. Okay. Um, that little itty baby flower is going to move. Back panel is done. It does seem really small, but you know, I don't know if you know this, but cables stretch quite a lot. Um, this will block out cause like it's, they're super scrunched. Like there are full on, you know, especially here because she does this very fun thing where there's pearl stitches and then a, like a knit rib that'll block out like a lot. So it'll fit. Don't worry. Um, and I will probably, maybe I'll join and then I'll block so I can make sure everything looks really good. This is supposed to be a closer fitting top. I'm not making this oversized. Um, it'll be like 48 inches. So it'll be really close to my bust. And I, um, here's where I am, everybody. Ta-da! <laughs> All that work is in the back. Um, I am pretty close actually to finish the chart. So this is a V-neck. So I'm pretty close to finishing the chart for this before we get to the V-neck join. By pretty close, I mean like maybe 15 or 20 rows. But considering how much I did this week, that feels pretty close. So, uh, but yeah, this again will sit across the shoulder line in the back. It doesn't sit like, it doesn't sit right up on my shoulder. It'll be like a little bit further back. Uh, not so much as the clay though. I'm loving it. I thought like, it just, it's fun. You definitely, it's not like you can memorize this repeat. I actually don't think it's that long, but like all this stuff in the middle, you don't have to think about a lot, um, which is nice. 
And yeah, it just looks fab. It looks really great. You know what I'll do actually maybe is like as soon as I join instead of doing a full block maybe I'll just steam block it and just like pull it a little bit to like make sure it's like close-ish to size it's probably what I'll do so I don't have to get it all wet with needles and cords and all the other stuff um I'm so excited to have this done though so but yeah I think it'll take a little bit of a backseat because we've got some whips to talk about um in a few moments I'm like gonna keep teasing that but Okay, I cast on a couple of things. Let me talk about the ones I can um, share with you here first. I do have a couple of secrety things, which is great and very fun. Um, and what I'll be doing is I'll be filming each week and I will release to you when we can talk about those things. So just know secret things are happening in the background. Um, but this one I can talk about. So I cast on my very first hand spun project and I'm so excited about it. This is a Sophie shawl. I told you I was going to do this because I got very knit knit inspired or um, knit fluenced by Kate from Red Door Fibers and uh, Reshma from Hello Lavender, who both are making Sophie shawls with their hand spun. And I was like, you know what? I wanted to make something shawl like with this yarn. This is the Lavender Latte yarn. Let me show you what it looks like caked up because it's so here. My two very separate looking balls. Um, the colors, they're not like matching up where the yellow is, which is actually kind of nice. So I'm getting interspersed yellow bits, not too dark of yellow. Um, but that's what it looks like. It looks like real, super legit yarn in the cake. Like, I was like, who made this yarn? This yarn's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. So that's what it looks like so far. It's really soft. Like the color is like very watercolory. I'm going to, yeah, but you can see there's like little, you know, little bits of the yellow popping out more. There is more, like there's some yellow just in here, but it's not as apparent. There's like the white, there's a little bit of uh, pink. This is washing it out just a tiny bit from real life. Um, but yeah, Sophie Shaw is a super simple pattern by Met, who is Petite Knit. Um, which I'm sure everybody knows who she is, but if you do not know, she is a Danish pattern maker. She is super popular. Um, she's doing a little bit better in her size inclusive patterning. Um, she tends to make like oversized knits, garments. Um, I really love some of her patterns and I just wish they were a little bit more size inclusive. They're like close, but I feel like just if you're grading already, just grade it, just grade it bigger. Like why, why? Anyway, <sighs> that's a battle for a different day. Anyway, this one though, great accessory. I'm super excited to have this. I don't know what size I'm making. Um, really the only difference is that you do less repeats or more repeats. I'm just going to go until I have about half uh, left a little bit more than half is her suggestion. And then I'm going to go back and I think we'll be fine doing that way. I am holding the balls together so that, um, th their yardage is not exactly the same, but I'll weigh at half. I know how much I started with. And so I'll weigh at half and hopefully have, uh, a complete shot at the end. <laughs> I think it'll be pretty big though because like I don't feel like I've made that much of a dent in them I definitely have um but they still feel you know like a lot and I think this is like 25 repeats and I'll either have you know I'll have somewhere around 60 hopefully before I decrease uh and that'll be the large size so I'm hoping the large size are a little bit bigger that's my hope that's my hopes and dreams um but I don't want any of that yarn left over I just want it to be totally gone so I'm gonna go really until half um even if that is way bigger who cares it's just a shawl thing um it's really fun though in, in case you've not seen this or not didn't know what the construction is it is just garter cigarter stitch uh pattern so it is just knit every row um it's got these lovely eye cords on both sides which um, now that I've done a couple of like shawl type things with these, uh, it's just like such a fun and, and beautiful little detail. Um, you know, then you're, you're done. You don't have to do any like extra finishing. It looks nice as you're going. Um, and the decreases are only on one side. So it is, you know, it is like an asymmetrical thing, which is great. 
Okay, that's all the details on that one. Uh, that again is 100% Rambouillet that I spun in a light fingering weight held double because there's so much spring in this, the Rambouillet, like the recommended yarn for this is worsted. I don't, I did not measure gauge because I obviously did not care. I actually did cast on first with 4.5 millimeter needles because I thought like this is light fingering. Maybe it'll be more like a DK and whatever. It, it was like too, it felt too tight it needs this spring like there's so much spring in the yarn like it needed the bigger needles to like give the bounce like keep the bounce nice and light and airy so that is the recommended needle size and that's what i'm doing um yeah that's all that's all we need to know uh that's yarn that yarn is dyed by or the fiber was dyed by back loop yarn co lavender latte which is why I'm drinking my lavender latte today, also because it's spring and it's time for lavender lattes. Okay, so I have two other things to talk about. In Whipland, um, this is one, and this is a Make 12. So I cast this on because I just, I said, I just need to get through some of these Make 12s. And I did tell you I was gonna do a sweater. I was really thinking that I was gonna do my stripes because I thought like that would be something fun to wear in the spring. But I was looking at my Make 12 list and this is the one that just jumped out at me that needed to be made now. Maybe it's because I don't have anything fluffy on my needles and it's still just cold enough that I can make something fluffy and then I'll have to put it away for a little bit. So that's why I'm doing this. It's also this color. I've been really craving like these, this like moody gray purple. So this is my wood anemone. No, I've not gotten very far. This is like th two thirds of the collar. Um, I have a fold, my fold line there. And I've got some of that done. Uh, I will try to get through quite a lot of this this week so that I can focus on some of these tests and other things that I'm I'm going to have on my needles. But um, this is a pattern by Sorry Nordland. It also came out last, like, like maybe end of summer, so like really early fall. Um, I am making a size 5. which is 48 and a half inches. Uh, the recommended ease is two to six inches. That's one and a half for me, that's good. Um, <clears throat> because of the lace, I just don't want it to be like, I didn't want to pick too big of a size because I don't want it to like feel droopy and like near my underarms. I don't think a lot of Sari's patterns are particularly droopy, like some of her boxier ones for sure, that's the look, but um, it's a circular yoke, all lace pullover, uh, and I'll talk about the yarn in a second. I'm using, there's a lot of needles going into this. This is three millimeter needles for the ribbing, all the ribbings. Uh, the lace is 3.5 because it will grow and, and block out. The body is actually knit in four millimeter needles. I think that's really great. Some people don't say that, but they say like, you may have to. I think a lot of people need to change their needles between lace and not lace maybe also because of the way this like this pattern is sort of like leaves and so maybe it's really open and that's why um I am so excited to do it though so I'm gonna get through the collar and a bunch more this yarn is I'll show you it in the skein it's so hard to capture like right now I'm it looks so gray purple in other light it looks like really light silvery blue it's the best color um this is it it's so pretty. Yes, more Back Loop Yarn Co. Obviously, on my needles. Um, this is the color Ghouls. So this was you. This looks very familiar to everybody. Hopefully, um, this is what I made for my sample for Back Loop last fall, which was the Phaedra. Um, and I knew, like I told you guys right after, that's what I wanted. I want that color. That color is gorgeous. But I wanted to make something different. So this is. Um, the Surrey, which is the same same base as this, so it's 74%. Baby Sarah Alpaca, 26% silk, 328 yards for 50 grams. And uh this is 80, this is her like cashmere DK or cashmere fingering base, which is 80% super wash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 400 yards, 400 grams. Super similar, you know, like composition wise as what I did for Sarah's Whitmore, also. Uh so yes. Hmm. It's so nice. It this the cashmere yarn is like really nice. It's a two ply. I really enjoy working with this yarn. 
So everything's going swimmingly so far. That's all the details. Not a lot going on there yet. Uh, I think it should be relatively breezy. The, the gauge is not super dense. It's a twisted rib neckline. So I feel like it's taking me a long time, even though I just cast on like late last night. So uh, getting through it is just getting through it. It's not very deep, which is good. One more yarn to talk about. And this is also acquisition. Well, this is a half acquisition. So I'm doing a sample for Erin. So here's more back loop yarn. And it's something I wanted to talk about anyway. She is having a summer collection and her summer collection goes live the 13th, I think, of April. Um, if that's wrong, I'll flash the date up here. I'll look it up later. But um, she's been teasing colors or, or starting to release colors on Instagram this week. This is one that I don't know if it's going to be out by the time I talk about it, but she did say I could film in color and just share with you since it'll be out imminently. And this is the color Sky. It's gorgeous. I believe she's, I think this is kind of a limited release. And she's only doing her, I, I don't know if it's, I'm not sure. I have to look again at the details, but I, she said something today on Instagram that made me think she's only doing her, this linen base, which is what we'll talk about in a second, and just 10 of each color. So she's pre-dyeing it now, and that's what's going to be available, and it's like first come, first serve. I don't know if that's true. If it is, I'm going to snag some of it, so sorry, guys. Um... She's got several colors released already. Sunburn is one of them. I'll flash a couple of these up here. Um, Mermaid Tail and uh, Creamsicle were all up. Creamsicle is like a perfect dreamy, like it's just a creamy orange. It's really pretty. Um, not a color I think I would pick, but I do like Sunburn. I think that red is pretty fun as far as like it's a summery red. It's not like too fire engine-y. I don't know. Um, but this is like super drapey like super floppy. Yeah. And so this base is, I don't know what she's calling it. Um, her summer blend or something. It is the same as it's the same composition as my stratus fingering from, um, horizon fiber. So it's 50% baby alpaca and 25% silk and 25% linen. But let me pull that out for you because I'm going to tell you, like they look, they must be from different vendors. They look really different. Um, okay. There's the difference. There's definitely linen in here and I can see it like up close. It's, it's got like a little tiny bit of the tan hint in it, but like maybe also cause she's, she t winds this a little bit tighter. Like this is so floppy and it feels silkier, like a little shinier than this. So maybe it's the dyes that they're using. Um, this definitely has way more heathering. Like Here's a better example because I have a light blue. I mean, it they look so different. Like you can see the sheen on Sky. Yeah, really different. Okay, also I just looked and Erin has two other uh, colors out as of today. So sand and summer haze or something like that. It's a really pretty purple. That maybe is the one I steal. Um, but yeah, I I love it. It's really nice. I did a gauge swatch yesterday. Here it is caked up. Um, I, yeah, I did my gauge swatch and I am making a champagne top. So, or I think it's just called the champagne top, maybe tank top. Anyway, I'll put a picture up here. I, this is just coming plans, but it is an acquisition sort of semi. I'm going to send it all back to her. Um, it won't take it'll take just over one skein. I'm making her the size three with one extra inch, no other mods. And it's a really cute tank top with a very fun ruffle. Thank goodness you start with a ruffle. It's actually really fun. You do a, it's kind of like a double knit ruffle, um, which is annoying, <laughs> but you do it first. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, and then you just, yeah, go, go right up to, um, this like cute little eyelet thing and then the body which I think will seem to fly by let's go through the rest of my acquisitions which is just the pre-order from treehouse so like I said the ever after collection was just like two and a half or three weeks ago I must have been like the very first orders one of the very first orders out of the door and probably because I just ordered one of a couple and two of one the way that most dyers do this is if they're dying on separate bases which treehouse always dies on all bases so every time 
um, she puts pictures out for release. You could see every single base because it does differ between. I like that she does that. Um, and so I ordered one of each of these and this is all of these are on the Sierra Sport, which is 100% Superwash Merinos, 320 uh, yards for 100 grams. Very much a true sport weight. It's a three ply and it's gorgeous. Um, it feels like very, is it a three ply? Hold on. I said that with a lot of confidence, but I don't actually remember. Yeah, yeah, it's a three ply. It feels very rounded. Like I feel like that I can tell just because like three plies feel more rounded just the way that they are. Um, this is uh, three different colors that my mother picked out. These are for her. They look a lot like this. <laughs> uh, this is The Prince Has Read Utopia, um, which is very cute. It's got a little bit of like green gray in it. So this line, she says the first time she dresses up to pretend like she's a courtier and she frees her manservant, um, person and friend, family member, you know, whatever. Uh, and she is wearing like a gold dress that has like a little bit of like a gray green detail on it and like a thing in her hair. So I think it's really like, I mean, that's what it's based off of and it's really pretty. This one is called A Bird May Love a Fish, which is, uh, what is this? She, she put up her photo inspiration for this one and I can't remember what it is, but like the line is that she says, a bird may love a fish, signore, but where would they live? And that is, um, and then he says, well, I shall make you wings. This is what she says to Leonardo da Vinci. So, um, and it's a really lovely green. It's very tonal, this one. Um, and then this one is a little more variegated and it's called Some People Read Because They Cannot Think for Themselves, which is one of an early line in the movie. And this is based off of the wallpaper in the dining room of the house that she grows up in. Um, and her stepmother says this to her, um, which was a mean line, but it's, it's a very iconic line in the movie. Okay, so here they are. She is planning to make a three color shawl. These are for my mother. She picked these out. I love that she picked them out. She actually, I have a lot of treehouse. God, I have a lot of treehouse yarn now, now, and I don't think I've ever even made a treehouse project. Is that true? Oh, no, I did. I did the, the shawl. But I have, like, several different bases from her. Um, One that I don't have that I really want is people rave about her Dove DK, which is supposed to be, like, the softest ever. So I would like to get some of that in a, a pre-order or an order in the near future. But these are, um, I have some Sierra Sport. And so she felt these, and she was like, ooh, I really like that. And I don't want a fingering weight that's too small, but I don't want a chunky shawl. So this is what she picked, and I love it. Um, I have not even shown her that they're here yet. <laughs> surprise um I will give them to her that's that's her early mother's day gift from me um okay and also because my mom has never ever ever in her life worked with or bought hand knit yarn, hand dyed yarn so I'm really excited to like and I'm, I'm not gonna expose she's not gonna jump full into this world like I am but I'm glad to like give her something that I feel like is a little bit special a special again this is her very favorite movie ever so it's a really and like something that we watched a lot together so um, something I love for her to have. I got also the color ever after and the color ever after is based off of like the movie promo picture, which has tons of colors in it. So, uh, I got Sequoia fingering, which is hundred percent super wash Merino. It's a two ply. Um, it's 382 yards for hundred grams. So it's a little bit more like a heavy fingering, uh, a light, light sport. Um, which I am obsessed with this color. It reads really purple, which I'm glad. It has this like mint though going on in there. Look at that mint. And there's red and pink and some brown bits, but it's not warm at all. There's some orange, some red, but like, oh my gosh, like these skeins are un they're unbelievable. The layering of color, it's gorgeous. I think, I don't know exactly. I'm going to reserve this for a summer knit for sure. I really think uh, the pattern that I first thought of is doing a um, mini mock neck. That's kind of what I'm thinking, like a full length mini mock neck. I can do that in two skeins for sure. Um, I don't think, you know, like t oversized t-shirts, we just learned this. I really need three skeins. Um, but I do, th I think like this would be so fun, like under stuff. Also because it's like, not loud it's like a dark color but like yeah anyway that's what I'm thinking and I reserve the right to change my mind <laughs> uh, 
One more thing to talk about for future plans is that I got asked this week to participate in a wool and pine design um, test knit, which I actually was wondering this. So I'm on their uh, D stash or their D stash, their Discord. And um, it was one of the first other yarn discords I joined. I really love all of their patterns. I've like, there are a couple that are not quite my style, but like for the most part, just like so, so much of their catalog is what I want to knit. Last year, I think I made, you know, three or three or more um, wool and pine design knits, which was really fun. I've tested for them before, but they seem to be doing less of their garment calls over their discord and not, I haven't seen them on Instagram. So I was wondering what they were doing. They're reaching out, um, strategically, which is really interesting for them to do. I think people who've made their knits, maybe people have tested before, um, and people who they think take good pictures. I think it's a really important part, obviously of the promo. Um, and so they're being choosier, which is their choice for sure. Uh, so I, there was no public call, I don't think, but I was asked to do it. It is a little bit shorter of a timeline than I would love. I would love like eight full weeks. This is six. Um, I'll get the pattern this week. I'll flash a picture up though. Uh, they said it's not a secret. It's called the Scotch Broom Wrap. It is a wrap top, though I think it's set, you know, so I think that... Um, I'm not sure if it's topped out. I don't have a pattern yet. I'll get the pattern this week. I It's fingering weight. Um, and I think that like it's set, like it seems that, you know, you set it and then you do your, your, like essentially it look, looks like a double knit, like button band at the bottom, but that will like put, you know, it'll overlap the two and give you like a full, you know, one and a half inches or whatever at the bottom, um, of a button, button band, like bottom band hem, hem, that's the word. I am really excited. It's gorgeous. It's got the Scotch broom, uh, which they have like a pullover or a t-shirt of this, which has, I think it's just across the top, the, this same lace chart and it's just in the sleeves. And, um, I told Mike, he was like, do you need to do another test? And I was like, no. And I do definitely have yarn I can use for this. It's only going to take like three and a half skeins or three skeins. Um, it is fitted. It's going to be an annoying thing because it's cardigan essentially. Um, you're not knitting in the round, you're knitting back and forth, but I think it's so cute. And I love the wrap top I made. And I was thinking like, maybe I'll find another couple of them. This is a different style because it's set, you know, you don't just, you don't just knit forever. You do eventually put it together, which will be really interesting for fit and other things too, to see how I like that as an idea. Um, but I love a lace sleeve. Like I'm really obsessed with the idea of having some of these long sleeve tops, which is something I gravitate towards more, even in the summer, wanting my like arms to be covered, but having them be open and breezy. Best of both worlds, right? Like this is going to be so fun. I don't know what yarn I'm going to pick yet. It sort of depends. I'm going to see, I do have like, they gave me like the first page of the pattern, which is got like gauge and some other things. So I probably do a gauge swatch so I can just know this week. Um, but I, I don't know what color I'm going to use. I'm, I'm like debating if I want to do something like this, which is, um, my Sagittarius yarn I just got, uh, which I really love. Obviously I also have three skeins of this, which is a really similar color, but less variegated. Um, and we'll have a little bit more structure because this is a non superwash from sea change. Uh, but I also was thinking, I did have this pinned for a different project. This is Cashmere Caverns uh, from Explore Knits and Fibers in the color Jeweled Vixen. Um, I, w I wanted to use this for a um, color tip tee from Emily uh, Curtis, but now I'm kind of thinking, I didn't have any plans for this. You guys, I'm just planning out loud with you. Junie and Sai Yarn, I also got, I got both of these at Flock last year. And the color tip tee, I think I will wear a ton. I think that the shaping is going to be gorgeous on me. And it's just like, it's just a t-shirt. Like, I mean, and that's fine. But I do like, I'm a pretty plain person. I gravitate towards t-shirts more than I'm going to gravitate towards a wrap top. I'm going to feel like I need to be somewhere to wear this. So I'm acting, and, and the cashmere caverns will pill more. So I'm also thinking like, if I'm going to wear, if it's like my, my less worn, but like nicer kind of top, then this luxury base may be great for it. For my hard wearing t-shirt, I might want to just do this. They're equally like very variegated. Uh, so I think that's current plans. <laughs> 
that's where my mind went this week at least so um and I've just been like really craving something super variegated like maybe just after getting this ever after yarn and even like they're not the same color they don't you know they have a similar vibe though of like oh my gosh jeweled tones and fun so um it may be plain it may be that I'm gravitating towards something like pinky purple instead of blue although I was thinking also about this 10 fathoms or 10 fathom c um that I got as my from Thistle House yarn as a winning last year this would also be mega gorgeous and like kind of it's just it's super wash but it it's like a little bit shiny like this would be really a stunner in that too if you have an opinion let me know um I don't know yet I'm I'm I could be swayed I'll honestly probably take a poll from my knit group too um and since they know me and they're all really great at picking colors for projects I very much trust their opinions <laughs> okay uh what else is going on I don't really think lots of cast-ons lots of new projects I mean three projects off my needles two new things that are are on and working and a ton of progress on my Haley so we're just moving right along uh this is editor Megan I totally forgot a very exciting announcement starting now Hyris makes Iris, who I am an affiliate for, is doing her annual summer cal. And so there's a lot of fun things going on with this. You can enter using any of her summer tops. There's a list on her website. I'll put the link below to like all the details about the cal. Um, but it starts now and it goes until July 1st. And that is really exciting. So you basically can get entered to get a maybe some other prizes but you'll definitely get a 25% off discount for all of her patterns when the uh, knit along is over which is really awesome if you want any of her patterns please just use my code which I will also put the link to below and you can get 10% off now for whatever pattern you want to join with there is also one free pattern in this and that's her stash busting tube top which I had in one of the pictures that we just looked at so um yeah that's all the details and I am going to be making this one the the beautiful sundial tea which is going to be made out of a very similar color to this sample which is my explore knits and fibers grapefruit yarn so I would love if you join she's got most of the chats and stuff on discord and I will be there see you over there or I forgot I have to talk about books so let's not forget let's not um I did a lot of reading because I did a lot of knitting so that's what happens um this week I pushed through and I finished like, it was a lot, uh, of Lord of Chaos, which is the sixth book in Wheel of Time. I did not pick up the seventh yet, though I have it and I will start reading that this week. This is um, by Robert Jordan. His mega super huge series, if you don't, if you're new here, you I, I'm on a journey to read these. Um, I, I really liked this one. There was... I told you this was going to happen eventually. They all gather back, not all of them, but several more of them gather back in at the end of this one and a big crazy thing happens. Um, it was really crazy actually. And like, it was a battle. So, you know, as battles are, uh, there were a lot of, there are a lot of moving parts right now. There's like, uh, there just always is, but there's a lot of intrigue and, um, Rand is definitely becoming his potentially darker crazy self um which is the thing we're all worried about and I'm enjoying it though I uh Perrin and Fael are finally back in the picture for a little bit though I think I've I heard they go away again for quite like a book or more which is sad um but <laughs> I can never tell what's going on with Perrin <laughs> He loves her so much, but they don't talk to each other. They're like young, young people in love, which is basically idiots. But okay, um, it's been fun. Um, I am reading. I'm. Uh, I also finished. Let's go with what I finished first. I finished 
uh, Clockwork Angel, which is the first in the Infernal Devices series, which is three by Cassandra Clare. I also finished the second one, which is called A Clockwork Prince. Let's go through the first one first, though. So Clockwork Angel, last last week I had like just started it, so I didn't know what was going on. Uh, similarly to the Mortal Instruments, you get dumped into a situation that is like the beginning of the chaos for a character who is new and has no idea what's going on in the world very similar ish circumstances though not that all the same um there's a love triangle she does love those um yeah I liked this a lot it's like Victorian England so you're definitely in a different place you have a lot of the same intrigue and world uh, similar even um old-fashioned tendencies and stuff of uh the clave and everything and yeah it's it's good uh you're we're in like a battle of a one bad person similar to mortal instruments where it's like the arc of like the heroes through these three books are trying to get this bad person uh and uh, right now I still don't ex like I'm through the second one you know his game but he's like a there's there's more things up his sleeve and they just keep talking about it like that like he's got all these plans so that she can throw whatever she wants at you and you didn't have to see it coming because um he's got lots of irons in the fire so to speak the second one is also is called clockwork prince uh this one is the same characters again so it's them doing doing the same arc but this one there's some betrayal there's also the love triangle comes kind of to a head but also unresolved so I did spoil this for myself a little bit because I didn't care because this has been out for a long time I'm allowed spoilers if I want so I know it's gonna happen to a degree like I know very high level um I can't deal with the angst and anxiety also because I have a semi-favorite though not really between the two boys um but it's about so th the story is that Tessa is a person who has a power that unbeknownst to her where she can like change into other people and um this bad person wants her for some reason and we don't know why exactly yet uh well sort of we we kind of know why uh but he's a bad person and he's making like automaton armies and things to try to destroy shadow hunters and that's like this whole thing uh but it's pretty i mean it's it's keeping interesting this world i just, this is, seems a little bit like smaller because you're Jace and Clary and all that gang in the first one really went into more factions and this is very much centered around just the the London Enclave um or the London Institute and their problems with this and like little less intrigue out though Magnus Bain is in this because he's a warlock and he's like an immortal I guess um he's in this one and I love it I love I love Magnus I love learning about his when when he first does a nice thing <laughs> um it's pretty fun so the next one I don't know why I put this down because I'm not done yet um I started A Clockwork Princess which is the third and I just started that last night and I have not gotten very far I am Kindle reading The Serpent in the Wings of Night, which is the first book in the Crowns of Nyaxia series by uh, Carissa Broadbent. I'm enjoying that, though I'm, I slowed down this week a little bit. I, I went to bed a little bit late, so a few nights. Um, and so I just went straight to sleep. But I uh, started reading, started reading, I finished, um, I needed like right after The Clockwork Prince and I finished, um, the sixth the lord of chaos the sixth wheel of time book i needed a romance and i needed something that was not even fl i mean fluffy but like just just a romance straight modern romance so i did i had this i think someone recommended it to me it's called the hating game by sally thorne and i ripped through it it was so good if you need a non-traditional enemies to lovers book um, it was a little bit like I think it maybe would have better been a better experience to fizz like to eyeball read this because there's a lot of internal dialogue and you switch between the two perspectives. The narrators do a really good job of it, and it's a, both a, a male and female narrator. But um, 
the internal dialogue. I think it, it would have been good if I had just eyeball read this one. Um, it, some, it was, there was a surprise I did not necessarily expect. I really liked it. It's about two coworkers who are vying for the same position. Um, and they are in the hating game, but hate and love are two sides of one coin, are they not? So I had a really great time reading that. And that's all for books. Okay, I'm going to talk through the last part. Hopefully this is not too long. I feel like I've been talking forever. Um, the last part of my free pattern roundup. So I have a couple of larger accessories. I did get a couple of like sock suggestions. Again, I'll just probably put some socks into the bundle that you can find, which I'll pin at the, I'll put down at the bottom too. Um, but every time, anytime you go to my Ravelry page, you can find this in my favorites. It's called free patterns. Um, and everything is in there, but I, so, so I'm going to go through a couple that I really love some things that are on my like on my actual list and a couple that were sent in so uh and I don't think I got that many garments sent in but you guys did send in some accessories so the first one as we've talked about before Pearl Soho has tons of free patterns and I love a lot of them they have more accessories and like blankets and dish towels and things I think than garments that I would gravitate towards making but they've got a couple of like really gorgeous really gorgeous scarves and shawls okay so I'm going to talk about four of them because these are things that I've made or have been on my make list. The first one is the Jasmine scarf, which I'll put a picture up here. And it is just a scarf, but it's uh, got this like herringbone um, pattern that I am obsessed with. I think it's really pretty. Um, it would be great for a bulkier singles yarn if you have one. Um, I think it would be great as a tonal mostly, but yeah, it looks really gorgeous. I I have some yarn actually I bought for this a couple years ago to make for a friend. Uh, it's not a color I would use for myself, but I wanted to make her something. And so I just need to do it. She has since gotten different things for me. Um, another one from Pearl Soho also, it's their very famous half and half triangles rack wrap. This is essentially a large square. It is a blanket. Um, but you, you can knit, I think at least two sizes. And really it seems like just, uh, with the way the pattern is, you could just cast on more or less and you'll make m more or less of a square and that's fine. Um, it's two colors. You use fingering weight yarn and it's a garter stitch, super squish kind of super simple make. I think if you wanted to dabble into like the Laura Penrose, uh, like her blanket that has, she picks up the same way I think that this scarf does for, uh, for the blanket squares, um, in that you make a half of one color and then you make the other rest of the half, the other color, uh, Ariel made one last year. It, it is really pretty. You do need like two skeins of each color. So it's not, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a lot of knitting for sure. Uh, but it's something that I could see myself making in the future. The other one is one I have made from them that I absolutely adore, which is called the uh, Stitch Block Cow. There's so many of their wraps that I think are really amazing. Um, I'll add a couple extra just because I, I just like love so many of them. But the stitch, stitch block, block cowl has four different, no, sorry, three different patterns in it. Uh, yeah, three. And I could show you mine at some, I don't have it in here and I'm not going to go get it, but maybe I'll put a picture up of mine actual that I made, which was really similar colors. Um, and, uh, I use Cascade 220 Superwash for mine. It's worsted weight. It's, uh, but it's got like three distinct stitch patterns. You use three colors. You could use three totally different colors. They did theirs in very similar color to that I did mine, uh, which is two yellows and a white. I had other yarn to make more in the future. And then I just decided there were other patterns out there in the world and I didn't do it, but, um, I love it. Okay. Here's another one. Um, seriously. So this one's been pinned for me, like since I first got Ravelry, <laughs> uh, maybe not quite, but, uh, it came out many years ago. It's, 10 years ago almost um it is their linen stitch color block wrap and it is a it's linen stitch it looks woven it's gorgeous it uses like nine colors and a bajillion yards of yarn I which really is not that much 1200 yards um 
I haven't done it because I've never like gathered a palette together to make it. It is again, it's air and it's air and weight. So actually that's like not so bad because I think it would go pretty fast, but I love a linen stitch. It's just like really tedious because it's like a half growth of rows, but it's on my list for eventually sometime forever in the future. Um, I feel like eventually I'll slow down on garments again and maybe make some more accessories, but I don't know, maybe not. Okay, so here's a couple other ones that are not Pearl Soho. Uh, one, this one is called Campside by Alicia Plummer. It's one of her only free patterns. Um, I'm gonna make an Alicia Plummer knit or two this year, I think, and I really love this one. So she has like a campside cardigan maybe, and even maybe a sweater that have this similar, like it's got um, some eyelets in it. That's like a little bit of the detail and it's really pretty uh it's a kind of a big squashy triangle wrap and so here's a picture of it and i i like it i think it's a, a great option um it is made out of um dk weight yarn and it you know uses two two and a half three skeins so um yeah that's a great a great squishy um lovely kind of summery wrap someone sent in this one the age of brass and steam kerchief which is a little bit on the smaller side. Um, I think it'll only use like one skein, maybe one and a half skeins of a DK weight yarn. I think there's a smaller and a larger option. So um, if you have a really special skein, that would be really nice to use this one for. And it's just got like a, um, it's like an eyelet garter uh, stripe that happens a couple times throughout. It's really pretty and super simple and another really great option. And I think you would wear it more kerchief style because it's not gigantic. Um, I think someone also sent this one in, which is close to you. Oh, sorry. That one was by Orange Flower Yarn. Um, and this one is by Justinia Lorkowska. She's Let's Knit on Instagram, which I'll like, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pin these guys somehow. Um, this is a really pretty like garter um, I don't even know what boomerang shape I think is what it's called uh, where it's like kind of slim on one end and then like the, a lot of the detail like it has this really pretty uh, eyelet like finned um, ridged edge that goes on one side right and then it would wrap on the other anyway um, and, and just straight on the other it's really nice another one that I think would be really great for a single beautiful skein because I think it takes so this is 418 yards a fingering weight so like one special gorgeous skein would get you there which I love a single skein um project or so let me see if there's one other there's one other so uh, this is called Reina by Nora Buckland and it is a um another single skein project that's really holy so it's a little bit bigger Again, um, not something you'd use like full body shawled, but probably wrapped around your neck like the picture. Um, and it's really eyelet e has like a lot of eyelet detail um, to get you that slightly bigger size for one um, skein of fingering. And it's gorgeous. It's really pretty. Uh, I think they actually make this one of the sample yarns for this is Makita. And I have some Makita single skeins that I could totally use like would be really fun because it would like let them show but you can because there's a lot of eyelet you can still see the detail that's it that's all for some that's my wrap up of all the free things um if there's any other like kind of content like that you guys would like me to go through let me know um those are just my opinions pretty things I found for you for free on Ravelry I talked a lot that was a big episode there was a lot of stuff that happened I had so uh, much fun chatting with you, though. I need to go do real life things now. I um, will be again. I'll be back on Thursday. So I'll have some project updates. It's like going to be so confusing for me for the next few weeks because I have two secret things. So I I just I'm not going to talk about them at all. But um, no, I'm filming in the back end, too. So you'll kind of just get the, my regular updates all at once for those. But that means there's a lot of things going on that maybe will look like not as much progress next week, Week, which again, like I don't, I could knit not at all and just not film and it would be an okay week still. But it's really my, my stress reliever, my solace. Um, part of the reason I got so much knitting done this week is again, I had a lot of meetings and I just had that stock knit part of the body for the skyline and I ripped through that. So I really didn't have to knit that at all at night. So I had like all this time to just 
push through some of these other things and you guys I finished this like on Monday I just I just needed to be done with it and so I just I pushed it right out and I'm glad I did I really am glad I have it my Easter knit <laughs> although I I'm tempted to wear this is my Easter knit tomorrow. I'll take some pictures with the baby. Um, because this to me is a robin's egg. Like this is so robin's egg blue with like just that little bit of like brown, um, brown and dark blue details. Obsessed. Obsessed. Okay. Making things I love. It's been a fun journey. Uh, I will talk to everybody next week. Again, if you have other content you want me to make that you're interested in let me know give me your opinion on what yarn to use I mean also other things like not things I didn't talk about if you just think like you have a color suggestion or something for that scotch broom wrap let me know and let me know what you are working on I have such a good time just getting I mean it's like a, I get like a 10 second snippet into your lives as after you listen to me talk for so long um but I want to know I want to know what's up you can always find me on Instagram at a underscore naughty underscore mess just like here um and on Ravelry as a dash naughty dash mess I will always friend you back um and I do I am like <laughs> a, I'm a little bit of an online creeper I definitely like because you can go to that friends page and just see what updates people do and sometimes I just scroll because I want to see what projects you guys are working on and um you know like what yarns people are loving and so I do that I mean I do that just with all of Ravelry but I definitely uh do it to my friend list so if you want to be in my online stocking please please uh friend me there um otherwise give me a subscribe if you have not give this video a like and leave a comment so we can chat more and I will talk to y'all next week bye